Hi, I'm Joe Harris, president of the University of Oklahoma. I want to welcome you to our conversations with the president. This platform gives me the chance to talk to some of the great people who make OU so special. Make sure you're subscribed to Conversations with the President, and you'll be the first to know when new episodes are released. Let's get started. First things first, um, I want to congratulate, uh, and this is just a ridiculous thing to say, but our women's gymnastics team and uh, Coach K.J. Kindler on winning back-to-back national titles and winning six of the last nine national championships. Uh, K.J., I don't know what you do, but you are an absolute superstar. Congratulations to all the women. Um, We are so proud of you. Uh, That is truly a stunning achievement. Our men's gymnastics team uh, doing an amazing job, closing out 20 23 straight NCAA finals appearances, a fourth place appearance this year, uh, rounding out an amazing overall season. Proud um, of both those teams and all of those um, that are making that happen. Uh, Now, as we get ready to welcome today's guest, I want to remind everyone, if you haven't already, you know what's coming. Um, If you haven't subscribed yet to Conversations with the President on our YouTube channel or wherever you listen to our podcast, do it right now. I'm not asking you. This is an absolute order. It's a directive. Uh, Please go ahead and do that. Our audience is growing. We appreciate everyone that's listening and watching uh, along. Today's guest is someone I've been looking forward to chatting with for some time. She has become a friend in short order. She is a remarkable coach. OU Athletics has seen uh, phenomenal successes across the board in the past year, and today's guest is a major part of that. Uh, We welcome Coach Jenny Baranchek. I want to welcome our women's basketball coach, Coach Jenny Baranchek, to the show. Coach Baranchek just completed her second season. I know. Time flies. Um, as the head coach of our women's uh, basketball team and has taken the foundation laid by our uh, predecessor, Sherry Cole, mm-hmm. and just absolutely run with it. Uh, your latest team, uh, just for the first time since 2009, yeah. uh, claimed the Big 12 uh, title. Uh, which is absolutely exciting and remarkable. First time since 2009. Um, unbelievable players on your team. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've grown them in exciting ways. Uh, we are setting the Big 12 on fire. Uh, and one more year of that than heading to the SEC. Um, something about coaches that played at Iowa uh, are pretty good <laughs> here, right? <laughs> right. Bob Stoops and I are so similar. Right. Yes, in so yeah. many ways. No, yes, similar, that, similar that's contracts. Right. That's right. Right, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, no, it's amazing. In two seasons, it, it in some ways it feels like you just started here, and in some mm-hmm. ways it feels like you're already an institution. Um, what is it? You've just now finished the second season. Uh, oh. You are hot on the recruiting trail, and we're going to talk about that. But mm-hmm. um, kind of as you, if you had a chance to unpack the last two seasons, how do you feel about where things are with the program uh, and with yeah. you and the family here in Oklahoma? Yeah. There was a lot in your first question there. That well, this program this program is pretty aggressive. <laughs> pretty yeah. aggressive. Right, it's cutting edge program. Right, exactly. No, <laughs> honestly, it's been um it has been. It, it sometimes it feels like you you literally just got here and your hair's still on fire and you're trying to figure out where to go. Um and at the same time, it 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 completely feels like home. It's been a great place and I love the people in the women in that locker room. I love the people that I get to work with. I mean, you look at all the coaches here yeah. that have been phenomenal. Obviously, an administration that's completely supportive of just the overall mission of where we all want to go. And I obviously, think it's mainly the administration. It's mainly you. And I don't want to yes. name names, but right. yeah, you brought it right. up. <laughs> I think almost all of the success right. is mine. Exactly. Um, yeah, but the women's sports have just been yes off the charts yes another national championship right um right. for women's gymnastics mm-hmm. softball's doing okay mm-hmm. yeah right? just a little bit <laughs> right. i know i know uh, women's tennis know. um men's gymnastics yes. but uh yeah it's a pretty pretty rarefied air right now you know it really is and i think the thing that's so amazing is one you look around campus and you see all these people that are not only just competing for national championships they're achieving elite level play, right? And I mean, you're talking legendary. And then you talk about the humility of the coaches. And I mean, Patty Gasso is as great as they come. KJ Kindler is as great as they come. And I mean, you're talking about two women that not just dominate their sport, but are dominant coaches 
of any sport, whether it's male or female. Right. And so you look at what they continue to do and the humility they have. Uh, it's really impressive, especially for somebody. I still consider myself a young coach. <laughs> I, not many people do, but I will. <laughs> no, you absolutely um, but I think that they've been so gracious and so kind. And so a lot of us really get to learn from greatness. And when you get to do that on a daily basis, is there anything better? I don't know. And let me ask, a lot of folks yeah. wonder, do, do, you, um, do you have regular interaction with them, with the, the, those coaches you just mentioned? You know, you don't necessarily ever get regular interaction with anybody because you kind of sometimes get in your silo and you just, you know, you just keep going. However, um, we're really intentional to be able to connect. And I think Joe C does a great job in terms of making sure that our coaches get to interact with each other because we need to be our biggest cheerleaders. And that yeah. doesn't happen. That's the thing also, especially at this level. You know, there's a lot of teams. You know, I love getting to work with Porter Moser every day, and I get to see him a lot. And we kind of talk about him. He's always... He's a very calming influence. He's very... <laughs> such a calming <laughs> influence, right? <laughs> um, but you talk about this just incredible energy, and he's so easy to cheer for. And especially the way that our world is going, it's not easy to cheer for, especially men's basketball. And so to be able to watch him do it the right way, um, and work his tail off and his staff. They're all just amazing people. And so I love that. You know, Brent Venables, again, great energy, yeah. um, is really supportive of all the coaches. You just don't get that. So yeah. no, we don't get to just hang out all the time because nobody has time to really do that. But we are intentional about connection. And so that, those times that we connect are really meaningful. Yeah, that's fantastic. And um, you had two uh, two players that were named to the mm -hmm. honorable mention All American team. Mm -hmm. uh, you, for the second year in a row, uh, were named uh, in the top ten coaches. Um, how does that feel, and how proud are you of those women? Well, you know, this is the only thing that you really get proud of with this extra COVID year, right? <laughs> because right. you get to keep them for two years. Otherwise, <laughs> we wouldn't have had the opportunity to do right. that. But I love what they've been able to do. I mean, you look at this senior class, and they just really believed in this program, put their blood, sweat, and tears in this program, took this program from a 4-14 four and 14 Big 12 record to their senior year in 14-4. and four. You know, that doesn't really happen. And again, yeah. doing it the right way, having fun. Um, there were just so many great things. Obviously, Maddie Williams was just able to, yeah. you know, be drafted. Uh, to Seattle for the Absolutely. Seattle Storm. So she heads out already this week. I mean, that's also yeah. the difference is, you know, in, in women's basketball, you go right to the WNBA, but you don't stop. There's never an off season. Mm -hmm. And so these women that become professional, you know, their college season ends, you know, the men's basketball, their college season ends, they get drafted in June, they don't go till the next year, the women have right. to go and they're in training camp already at the end of this month, at the end of April. Yeah, I hadn't thought about so, that. It's, so you do it's that. Immediate. And then yeah. as soon as you're done with your season, you go over season, you play. And then as soon as that season's done, you come back to training camp the next year. So there's never an wow. off season for women's basketball. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, as a, as a, you know, a dad who did some coaching of youth soccer right. uh, here in it's Norman. It's the same. It's, it's the <laughs> there's same. There's never an off right? season. Never an off. It's basically the You know, the same in all thing. fairness, youth right. sports, there's not an off season either. And that's another world. That's probably a conversation for another day. Yeah. But I'm also a youth sport parent. Yeah. Right. It's awful. Uh, for somebody that got cut in seventh grade from a lot of sports, I have to relate through youth sports to, uh, right. to connect. Right. Yeah. So do well, a lot of people. That's, that's great. <laughs> I think that totally works. Um, no, to me. Okay, so you you yeah. are a big deal. You've already established that through right. your humility. But um, in your house, you're like one of two superstars. I'm I not know. talking about Scott. We're not talking about Scott. I know. Most people would be talking about him, wouldn't they? Right. Yes. But it's not Scott. It's Maddie. <laughs> Right. Like, what happened there? That Jordy. was... Jordy. I'm Jordy. I'm yes. so sorry. No, Jordy, Maddie. Yeah. We just talked about Maddie. But yeah. yes, I know. I yeah. know. I, I, If I would have known that, I would never have allowed it. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. So you had no idea and, that she got mic'd up. No, I... Well, I knew. I mean, here, here's what happens is you go to the NCAA tournament, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have all these forms to fill out. And so for, for women's basketball, it's it's an ESPN contract. Mm -hmm. And so you have to say, okay, you can allow them to do this, not this, yes, this, yes, this. And, and before so, you go into this, just yes. for the listeners, uh, this is your daughter who at the this second round... Yes. who um, became a star right. she went because viral. of her vocal cheering and right. support of And now of her wants her own YouTube team. channel. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because one, I would even know how to do that. Right. And two, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, really, no. I know. Okay. My so husband the, has a hard time <laughs> saying no, and I'm sure you have a hard time saying no. I do. I don't. Yeah. I'm really good at it. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so, okay, so you did not know she was going to get mic'd up. Well, okay, so I knew what what happened is they, they ESPN kind of came back and they said, okay, can we get in your locker room more and we want more access to your team. And there was another young woman on the other team and her brother played for their for the men's team and so they were micing him up and so they said, you know, can we mic your daughter, you know, or your husband? I was like, not my husband. Not Scott. Not my no. husband. That would just, that would get us all fine. I know Scott. And, and I mean, maybe that's fired. a bad idea. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. And you you know him a little bit, right? <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. I only know a little bit. You so know him as a fan. Right. Yeah, not good. <laughs> so I said, I said to my husband, I'm like, can we, you know, would that be okay? I'm, you know, you kind of have mixed feelings and then you're like, how bad could it really be? Right. What could possibly go wrong? Until after the game. Right. And then I'm like, oh. She was a star. Though. Who knew? You I had mean, to be proud of her. You know, I, proud is a unique word, but <laughs> I, I would say it was actually, you know, because as a coach, I mean, you know how this is when you, you were so invested mm -hmm. And you you know your family's invested. I mean, we moved here right. for my job, and 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 you don't have a job. I mean, this is what this is who we are. This yeah. is. I mean, this right. is a part. This is a significant part of who we are. And so this is also who our family is. And I don't think I ever got to see it through her eyes yeah. until that point. So as much as I was like the mom in me was like, oh my god, what did I do? And allowing this, there was also this element of, wow, they're we're all in it. They're all We're in. all in. I mean, she showed and it was... Yes. Yeah. It was now, great. Now, if she could, like, play a little harder or maybe, like, practice her math like that, yeah. I would be really proud. Right. Yes. So maybe translate that maybe energy translate it into, into something into some other things. her YouTube presence. <laughs> in, into other, right? in her YouTube channel. I want you to know, my... Um, Ashley, my wife, yeah. who you know, uh, just like fell in love with her. And <laughs> she made me watch that over and over again. Oh, you and a lot of people. I know. I know. I yeah. think, you know how many people came up to me and they're like, I've watched that a million times. I'm like, that's where she's getting her Perfect. viewership, everyone. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Are the other kids, uh, je any jealousies going well, on Well, my son, yeah. who, Eli, who's 10, and he's in fourth grade, and he's he kind of will tell me like, I don't know if I'm jealous because yeah. he doesn't want the attention, but, but he does, definitely doesn't want her to have it. No, I was going to say, that's really it, yes. right? It's not yes. that he wants it, yes. it's that he doesn't want her to so have it. So we went to the Women's Final Four mm -hmm. in Dallas, and um, you know because it's so close, we brought the whole family to the championship game. I played at Iowa, too, and so they were playing in the championship. I heard a rumor and of that, yeah. You heard a rumor of that, right? Yeah. You already, we were just, me and Bob were sitting <laughs> right. there. And uh, anyway, so, it, but that was, you know, that's the audience that sees her. So yeah. everybody's coming up to her. Hey, Jordy. Hey, Jordy. Well, really and she's just a little red face, you know, and he's just, steaming. I don't know if I like this yeah. or don't like this. And, you know, Hope, our five-year-old's clueless. So she's got yeah. no idea. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe, she just maybe, makes herself known. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she just, she right. doesn't need a YouTube right. channel. She lives in her She's world. her own channel. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. With the viewership yes. of, of, of her. Yes. That um, and the concession stand. Yeah. Well, you know yeah. what? Maybe we create a competition where if he goes all in like she go. did. Maybe there you Eli go. gets a little, little limelight. There you go. Yeah, I think yeah. that's healthy. Yes, exactly. Great sort of a feeding exactly. frenzy Great marketing, around. at least, yeah. right? If we're going to be all in, we're all in. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Right, exactly. <laughs> all right, so um, things over the last year or so yeah. have changed a lot. And let's talk yes. first in yeah. athletics. Let's talk yeah. about women's sports. Um, right. I had uh, uh, Patty Gasso, Coach Gasso, mm -hmm. on this show. Um, earlier, it was the 50th anniversary of Title IX, and mm -hmm. she spoke beautifully to that. Um uh, we, you, you have generated, um, uh, in your team, some mm -hmm. record attendance this year. We haven't seen mm -hmm. in, in a long time. Yep. Um, wh where is the viewership going for women's basketball? Wh where do, what do you see the trajectory of that, uh, to be on? Well, there is such an opportunity right now for, for women's athletes, period. You know, I mean, just the opportunities that we've had. And then you start to talk, you know, there's so much conversation in terms of equality. And I think one of the things that we really talk about is not just equality in terms of in spite of men, it's in addition to, yeah. right? And it's and it's with and it's a partnership. And I think that's something I'm really, really proud of that our women do. And so, you know, we had record attendance in men's basketball right. and in women's basketball. And that's that's a pride point for all of us. We yeah. want more people to be able to come on campus and be part of what we're doing. And then you look at what softball's doing and you look at all these things. Yeah. So then you look at, 
women's basketball as a whole, and you talk about the popularity. I mean, there were more than, you know, it was like 9.9 million views in that championship game, you know, and I know most people were talking about whether it was officiating or Caitlin Clark or whomever, right? right? I mean, there were some, there were some hot, hot spot topics, right? right, That they were talking about. It was great basketball. But it was great basketball. And I mean, you look at all of those things. You look at what South Carolina did this year. Exactly. And so for us even to end the season in the top 16 in the country, and I think that is um you know i mean that's something that is such a pride point for us and i see the trajectory of this program continuing to go forward because more people here are coming and they're seeing what yeah. these women are doing i think these women are you know they're they're accessible that we're grassroots we're part of the community we want to be the best for this community we can possibly be um and so i think from a popularity standpoint it's been incredible and i get to see that at a youth level too you yeah. know i see a lot of um, you know, young kids coming to camps. Mm-hmm. I mean, that part's been really fun. And we've gone and you see all these tournaments and people are playing. Uh, but, you know, what you never want is you never want to look at it less than it's a game. <laughs> and it's fun to watch mm-hmm. and it's fun to be part of. And, you know, I mean, one of the most proud things, I think, from my seat is, you know, we were second in the country this year in terms of scoring and second in the country in terms of assists. So what that means is we share the basketball. Yeah. And when you don't have, you know, it's not one person Mm -hmm. that's just creating a lot. Uh, It's it's across the board. And so I love our balance. I love the way our women do things. And it just really fits this area. uh, And it fits our state. Yeah, that's fantastic. And thanks for breaking down the fact that um, you're, you know. (laughs) Top in scoring and assists, and that means we're sharing the basketball. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, not everyone knows. No, and and you know, I, I wouldn't. Uh, just you because would too. The, the set being cut. I got cut in seventh grade, not just from football, but also basketball. Oh, so there's oh, a lot. You did of, have an there's a lot of that, personal you? sports. Yeah, <laughs> it was a rough. It was, it was a, a rough, rough year. year, but I mean, I'm. But you know, I think you're doing fine. I think so. Yeah. 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 My my uh, Jude. My yes. youngest, who's the giant 13 year old. Right. Uh, he the, the, was giving me a hard time. And he yes. said, uh, Hey, Dad, look at how good I am. Oh, and, nice. and you couldn't do this, uh, giving me a hard time. And oh. I said, Yeah, but you know what? If you Google my name, I'm actually, you know, in ESPN <laughs> <laughs> because of the. Right. You know, the, the move among conferences. Right. So, yeah. Perfect. There just you took go. a while. There you go. I almost have that chip off my shoulder. Uh, yeah, you won't ever, will you? No. But you know what? Some of yeah. those things drive us. That's right. It's missed right. baskets. It's, you know, it's all those opportunities. <laughs> it's just like us. Basket, you know, we didn't. Which well, I did. Okay. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. That could happen to anybody. It, it, it doesn't, but it yeah, could. No, it, it but it could. <laughs> it doesn't. And not, not, not at that level, right? Like maybe when you're right. little, but not, not in not middle school. seventh grade. Right. Come Feels on. like a little no. late for that. Um, all right. So, so yes. um, women's basketball was doing well. Mm-hmm. But um, and you talked about the fact that it's a sport and it's mm-hmm. the joy that comes with it and it's got to be fun. Um, but right now we're going through an odd time in intercollegiate athletics yes. and you're living it right now. Yeah, we were talking about this before the show, yeah. and um, and it's the strangest of times, at least that I've seen. Um, tell me um, what you see. You're in the the uh, a hot time during mm-hmm. recruiting right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that NIL. Mm-hmm. Um, which is an oversimplification of two components, um, you know, sort of organic and synthetic that are mm-hmm. out there. Um, h- how, what are the changes that you're seeing and how are you dealing with it? Well, I think, you know, again, unfortunately, that's so loaded of a question because yeah. it's so complex and it is, it's a different world. You know, it, they're, you know, gone are the days of your seasons over and you go on vacation. Now, I yeah. don't know if I've ever had that, but you still can take a breath, you know, for us, you're this, these new windows, right? These transfer windows, they start before the season ends and then they end here in a, in a few weeks. And so you just hit the ground and especially with transfers right now. And so I just saw a number earlier that for women's basketball, it's over 1900. So there's a lot of people in in the portal right now. in the portal. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least have been in the portal. You know, some have already, you know, chosen a school and whatnot. Um, And there's, you know, there's a wide range. What, What we're seeing, I feel like now are really top level players that are entering that portal. So it's not just playing time. 
It's not just, you know, you don't get along with your coach. It's just there's so many more factors that go to it. And that really leads in a lot to our the NIL yeah. and those opportunities. And so you see that magnified, you know, especially in, in a media setting, right, and what that looks like. And I think the challenge for coaches is we can't really have control over that. We can't really have a say. So there has to be process in place um, at each institution. Um, I think the thing that that we want to make sure though, and again, this is for sure our program, and I don't want to speak for all the other coaches here, but I do think that Oklahoma does a good job of, we're still trying to keep that purity of the sport, yeah. even though we have to understand the business side, because we're competitive, right. you know, and we want to play and compete at the highest level. So we do have to understand that we do have to, we don't have to agree with it, but we have to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but the difference now between professional sports and college sports, it's the academic piece, which is always going to be an essential piece on our side. And then it's culture. What right. are we going to do and create and make sure that people want to come and it's not just a dollar sign? because that's how it feels right now. Yeah. And, and, and it is, there is reality to that because you cannot blame a young person to pick a bigger dollar yeah. sign. And there's just a reality to that because a lot of, especially for our demographic, it's not just their money they're putting in their pocket because they don't need it. Sometimes their family needs it. So it's right. generational money. It can be generational change for their, yeah. you know? And so the, the motive, um, you know, for that is a little bit, uh, it, that doesn't always get shown yeah, and that doesn't always get publicized. And so, but there's reality in that. And so some of this opportunity is incredible for some of these young people and some of the stories we hear, maybe we don't hear the whole story. Yeah. No, I mean, it's fascinating and it, it's fascinating to see intercollegiate athletics, which hasn't changed fundamentally right? really in generations, all of a sudden has this tectonic change. Right. And, um, as a as a successful head coach, mm -hmm. it's a whole new set of challenges, right? Um, yeah. what, what do you see? I mean, when you look at it right now, you know how to be successful under a paradigm that no longer exists, right? Correct. As it did. Mm -hmm. um, and you've talked about what the essence, kind of our North Star is. But what, what do you think will be the attributes of the most successful women's basketball coaches over the next three to five years? Mm. That's a great question. Well, I think there's an, there's an element of all the business side that we're talking. But if I can take that out and say that that would be equal, it's literally going to be our adaptability and our relationships and the, the ability to continue to be flexible with the generation because even, even young people are different. And, you know, every generation before thinks the next generation's bad, right? right. So it's not, it's not good or bad difference. Right. It's an evolution. And right. so what I feel like is really interesting is as you start to study this generation of people, you know, they grew up with groupthink. They grew up in teams. And so that should really be elevated at the time that you leave home, you come and kind of develop who you are, and yet we want this individuality, right? And yeah. so there's a mental health component. And a lot of times you start talking mental health and you think, oh, someone needs to have medicine or go to a therapist or, well, a lot of times it's just, how do we feel good every day and right. be okay with that? Absolutely. And so we as leaders have to be number one in terms of our mental health. We have to come in a space and be such great examples um, of just living living every day with yeah. a smile on our face and actually like having fun with what we're doing yeah. um, and being really confident. You know, right now, I think young people are thinking confidence is like a butterfly and it just comes and it goes and someone can take it and someone right. can't. And it's action. You know, it's how do we get yeah. back to having that growth mindset? So I think establishing that as part of our culture of rolling our sleeves up, we're in it with them. You know, th that's one thing I think that I love about coaching mm -hmm. is that you're in it with them. It's not I'm up here and I'm over here yeah. and you just come play for me or you come work for me. Like, I don't I don't want to do that. That's not that's not how we want to do it. Right. And I think that's why at Oklahoma we get to do it different. Yeah. We're with them. You know, we are 100 percent with them. And I think when you can do that and they feel that it's amazing what can happen. Yeah. To me, it's been fascinating. Um, I, I'd love to have this conversation, you know, sort of come back to this in a, in a couple yeah. of years. Right. Uh, because it's moving so quickly. So I quickly. mean, just the way you're recruiting 
athletes right now. I mean, you're recruiting your own players, which didn't right. exist before. Right. And um, then you're recruiting in a space where NIL has become really important and brand management and all of those things that attend to it. And there are new demands on coaches we didn't have before. Right. And um, I just think it's a fascinating time right. that's sort of fraught with opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can attack it the right way. Yeah. And really good things can happen. Yeah. But the number of personal brand conversations I've had over the last year, <laughs> I never would have ever in my whole life ever thought about any right. of that, right? You never think right. of your personal brand. Right. And yet, and yet we live it every day. And not just from your daughter. And not just from my daughter. <laughs> right. right. Or my right. not so jealous son. Right. <laughs> but it is fascinating, right? Like a right. couple of years ago, who would have thought? Who would have thought? The discussions would be around when you're recruiting somebody or with current right. players, brand management. Management. Right. Yeah. Well, and then not only that, we didn't even touch on the COVID impact. Right. Of these young people or the another year that they have or how that's impacting high school players. I mean, it's there is a lot. There's a lot that's that's going on right now. Yeah. And and you can look at it as like, a, oh, my gosh, there's all these bad things. Yeah. I don't think we're doing that. I think we're trying to think ahead. And I think we are. Um, you know, our team is in a really good space. Yeah. They really understand what they're doing, where they want to go. And it's not just about the winning, it's winning every day. Yeah. And I think yeah. you, when you can break it down like that, then the world doesn't get so scary. You know, it's fascinating. The winning together thing, I mean, whether it's coaching um, a successful team like you're doing it or just our student population as a whole, I mean, the numbers around um, – those same concerns, right? The, the percentage of students in college across America today um, that have mental health concerns or issues, mm -hmm. um, and then the impact of COVID. I just was reading earlier today that um, coming out of COVID, they believe 60% of college-age students um, uh, had a, a, a diagnosable or treatable um, need or a need more sure. broadly for mental health care counseling. And so this idea that you're in it together right. really is about how do you feel like you belong. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge part of the strategic plan for the university mm -hmm. and a huge part of how do our coaches build successful, in every sense, programs. No, exactly. Yeah. No, exactly. I mean, belonging is all of it. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's where we all we all crave that we all yeah. crave this independence, but yet we want to belong to something really special. Yeah. So yeah. it's why uh, kids will give you a hard time and then be the biggest cheerleaders. And that's the truth. At a game. And vice versa. <laughs> right. And vice exactly. versa. Yeah. And right. vice versa. Right. Yeah. Without a doubt. All right. I, regrettably, we only have like a 25 minute program. Right. Folks that have listened to have said when it goes longer than that. It's just too much to take. <laughs> right, it's, exactly. It's too exciting. Exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly. I bet that's what they can't go on with the rest yes. of their day. Exactly. Because they're so it's really entranced. <laughs> um, right, I totally get it. All right, so heading into your third season yes. already. Yes. Um, I know you are deep into recruiting. I shouldn't mm -hmm. be bothering you right now so you, because you should be recruiting. <laughs> but um, sort of with all that's going on, mm -hmm. um, what what do you forecast? What's your outlook for um, the next Jenny Baranchek team? Oh, I couldn't be more excited about this team that's yeah. coming. I mean, we are, we have some great experience. We've got some incredible talent coming in. Uh, this group has, has a taste of where we want to go. Yeah. And you can't, as much as you practice, yeah. you can't practice it till you get there. You know, we, we went to the NCAA tournament, obviously, two years ago, second round, right. not so pretty. This year, the second round started not so pretty, and we clawed our right. way back. We didn't finish it. Um, and so they still have that. So that motivation continues to really nip at our heels. But we're in falling in love with the work piece, and I love that. I yeah. love being able to go in there. Um, they're, they're working extra. They're prepared for workouts. They've, you know, but they also – we haven't gotten a lot of off season time yeah. because with with COVID and you're built in the off season and so and you learn how to fall in love with that. I hate saying the grind because yeah, that sounds like a negative, but yeah. right. But you yeah. fall in love with that, and then especially when you see that person to your right doing it and the person to your left doing it, yeah. and then you start to expect more from that person to your right and to your left. Uh, so that I could not be more excited about. I love the leadership on our team. I think we have. Um, you know, we'll be a little bit of an underdog. I'm not comfortable with that. I don't like that because I want us to be able to, I want everyone to circle us and I want us to show up every single day. Yeah. And that's where our comfort comes from. Because let's be honest, when you're at Oklahoma, you're not the underdog. Right. It doesn't matter what your doesn't record matter. was, what it is, doesn't yeah. matter. So you got to learn to show up every day and bring what you have. And that's what this team's going to do. That's awesome. I absolutely yeah. love it. And, uh, 
Uh, anytime people talk about you, it's 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 always in a positive light. Right. I you just talk to the say, wrong people. <laughs> well, right. It's uh, and and uh, I always claim that I recruited you here to Oklahoma. Right. Even though you and I know it was a hundred percent you working with Castiglione. Oh, uh, but well, he's I came thorough. in for the Zoom. Yeah, he's very thorough. Yeah, he is yes. very thorough. Yeah. Um, no, isn't he the best though? He is. I, I mean, look at the talent he brings in. And, well, yeah. Yeah, and again, like he just does this this great job of you know being this powerful AD, yeah. you know that everybody knows, everybody ex- you know respects, um, and then but he does it with such humility, and he brings in people, and he puts them in really good positions, and uh, you know it's really fun to like the people that you work around, and yeah. that doesn't happen. It's so fun. I've worked with him for twenty five years, and in various roles, and. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the people of the highest integrity I've ever met. Right. And we all know he, he's really good at his job, um, but the integrity piece is something you can't hide no. for even a few years, let alone 25. He's special, and while you've just been here for two seasons, you feel like family well, already. Uh, same. And uh, you, Scott, and the whole family, uh, appreciate everything you're doing. Uh, yeah, thanks thank for making time no, uh, for this you. episode, and uh, hope to have you back again soon. Awesome. Awesome. Thank thanks you. A lot. Boomer. All right. Sooner. All right. I want to thank again, Coach Jenny Baranchek, for joining us. A terrific podcast. She is just a remarkable talent. So honored to have her as a guest. Um, the future of women's basketball at Oklahoma could not look brighter. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you are with us next time for the next Conversations with the President. Thank you.